Hey everybody, this is Dan with Weld Fever. Today we're going to go ahead and tackle the E6010 stick electrode. Now it's widely regarded as a beginning electrode for most, however it does have some definite advantages and hopefully I can explain those to you so you'll understand this electrode a little bit better. Anyway, stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to just go ahead and go over a few things about this electrode that you may or may not know. First of all, an E6010 electrode is a deep penetration electrode. It, uh, it's widely used for areas where you really need to penetrate deeply. Uh, as a result of that, pipe welders often use this for their root passes so that uh, they're sure to get real deep penetration on the initial onset. Simply because in a pipe you really can't weld it from the inside out, you've got to weld it from the outside and hope that it penetrates all the way in. Uh, usually after that they uh, go over it uh, after the fact with the 7018 rod. And uh, anyhow, so that's one of the uses for this. The other thing that is uh, really uh, kind of convenient about a 6010 rod is that it is a, an all position rod. It works particularly well in vertical and overhead and in addition to that it can be welded over minor to moderate surface contamination so we're talking about some light rust or some light paint uh, without having to prep the metal excessively now I always recommend that if you can clean the metal it's better to clean it than not however there are some instances where a quick repair has to be done or it's just something has to be put together like in some farming equipment or some other kind of machinery where you just can't really get to it and this is an ideal rod for getting in there and actually you know welding something together if you're not able to clean it as best as you could the other thing that this is good for is uh, butt welds and uh, <laughs> as you notice here I misspelled that there we go the other thing this is good for is butt welds uh, simply because of the penetration factor you're sure to get it completely to the other side. Um, I will say that depending upon what the item is, you may need to back gouge in certain situations to make sure you remove contamination and slag from the back from the back side. But if you're unable to back gouge, this is an ideal rod for that as well. Also, uh, there are some uh, uh, minor coatings, some special coatings uh, that this can be welded over and one of them is galvanized. The last thing I want to touch on before we actually start welding is the letter, the designation E6010 and what it stands for. The E in the E6010 stands for electrode arc welding. The 60 stands for the minimum tensile strength in thousands. So in this case, an E6010 rod uh, has a minimum tensile strength of 60,000 pounds per square inch. The 1 designates the position that you can weld this in. A 1 is an all position rod, vertical, overhead, flat, and horizontal. Uh, the 0 indicates many things. The most important one is the polarity. Anything ending in a 0 can be welded on DC positive only. DC positive is also referred to as DC electrode positive, DC plus and DC reverse polarity. Uh, the other thing the zero stands for is it also uh, talks about the uh, the makeup of the flux coating on the rod as well. One other point I might bring up is the zero uh, in the uh, designation here E6010 the last zero also informs us that the rod must be oscillated. Oscillation simply means that there has to be some movement some people do circles, some people do zigzags, some people do up and downs, some people do whip and pause. That's what I do and that's what I'll be demonstrating today. Okay, anyway, let's get on to the welding. Here we go. So here I have the old tried and true uh, cruciform. I'm going to go ahead and weld a few beads on that. And as I do it, I'll ex be explaining to you exactly uh, how I'm performing the weld. Here we go. Okay, I fired up on the plate here. I'm running this at about 85 amps, like I mentioned, I believe I mentioned earlier. Uh, anyhow, uh, what I'm doing here is a whip and pause technique. You'll notice that I'm in the puddle and I come out, I whip out, and then I come back in and pause. 
The reason for doing that is because when you whip out, you allow the molten puddle to partially solidify, which prevents it from spilling all over the place. And when you come back and pause, it allows you to deposit more weld material, filling in any voids and preventing undercut. It's a very rhythmic back and forth, as you'll notice. Uh, this is what you're looking for. So now I'll go ahead and uh, do a few more, uh, yeah, just uh, do a few more uh, stringers here and uh, build up a pad so I can show you what a pad is supposed to look like. Nice and flat. And uh, here we go. Okay, so here uh, I brought it in for a nice tight close-up so hopefully you can get a better look at the whip and pause action. It's a whip and pause, whip and pause, in and out, in and out. Yeah, it's really important. I'm emphasizing the rhythmic quality of this thing. It's very important that uh, you try to catch a rhythm here and back and forth, back and forth. I often tell people who are just learning to kind of think about a clock ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And try to, try to get the rhythm in that fashion. If you can uh, kind of stay with that rhythm, you'll note that your ripples will come out nice and even and you'll have a really nice bead once all is said and done. So here now I'm gonna go ahead and run the next few beads and I've sped these up really fast because I feel that uh, well it gets kinda of monotonous after a while but I do want to kinda of see you show you how it progresses through um, you know through <laughs> shipping slag and cleaning it all up and getting it all ready up for the final pad. Um, I finally decided after a few of these that I should not go the entire length of it just for the sake of uh, saving some time. So I uh, stopped short about halfway, uh, continuing along the pad. And I built layer upon layer, starting from one end and working across to the other. And as you work your way to the other side, you have to remember to overlap your next bead halfway over the last bead. So every bead that you progress you should overlap the previous bead by at least half. That way uh, your beads will all blend together and you'll have one uh, synchronous slab of weld rather than a bunch of little uh, worms of weld next to each other with valleys in between. You'll actually have one flat pad of solid continuous weld. That's the goal. Uh, stacking uh, beads next to each other again so they look like little worms that are kinda you know nestled next to each other is incorrect you don't want to do it that way okay lastly here this is in real time if you ever wondered how to finish off a uh, weld here it is come out and come back two three maybe four times and just give it a little shot at weld every time as if though you're simul simulating a whip and pause this will fill the weld, it will fill the bead to the absolute end of the plate and it will look nice and even and smooth. Well here it is. Uh, once we're all done we have very distinct ripples, uh, nice flat smooth pads straight across, no bumps and no uh, little worms uh, nestled next to each other. Nice and flat. Hey that's it for this time. Thanks a lot. Please rate, comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.